Okay, so it's a part of uh, our webinar series. We actually, uh, you know, I think most of you already join our uh, regular webinars. So this time we are focusing on uh, structure design and uh, we are uh, more specifically today focusing on steel structures. So Revit has a uh, uh, couple of versions uh, before got uh, enhanced in uh, detailing steel structures. Uh, before Revit 2017, it was not available directly in Revit to, uh, to place uh, steel connections directly. But after 2016, that is 2017 version onward, they uh, generated a plugin. That plugin uh, was now uh, made inbuilt in after Revit 2019 version. And now uh, over there, they have also added more automation options. So we'll explore all those options today. And uh, so we'll take you through the webinar. So, uh, so today's uh, workshops uh, workshop highlights are that we'll start uh, uh, with uh, a brief BIM modeling. So I'll uh, take you uh, through the live project demo where I'll uh, uh, start start uh, modeling Revit steel uh, uh, steel modeling in Revit. Then I'll also show you the workflow of truss modeling in Revit, and then uh, we'll also discuss about the concept of LOD in BIM in general because uh, you know uh, uh, sometimes when uh, we deliver projects uh, in Revit. Uh, I'm talking from designer's point of view because I'm also an architect and I have also worked closely with many structural engineers. So they uh, first uh, develop uh, a, a GA drawing. That GA drawing doesn't contain all the steel connections in that. So steel connections uh, are to be expected on a higher level of LOD. So that concept we'll also discuss, and what all uh, you know workflows can be uh, can be uh, can be uh, taken to uh, achieve those uh, levels of LOD. More specifically, LOD 400. I'll discuss about LOD uh, in brief. Then we'll also explore. Uh, Revit has a predefined you know uh, steel connections library in it, which is all parametric. That we'll also explore. The next uh, we'll also uh, try and explore the custom steel connection because sometimes uh, when out of the box steel connections are not uh, you know uh, uh, if they are not uh, uh, required for some reason or if they are not as per our country standard or if it is a kind of a pv structure uh, pre-engineered building where we need to design every connection uh, individually then we can also go for custom steel connections and then uh, after revit 21 version they have also added a, an option called propagate steel connections which basically uh, 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 detects the same members. For example, if you are uh, placing, uh, uh, let's say, ISMC member or ISMB member, ISMB 350 and uh, column and ISMB 250 beam, for example. And if you need to connect those uh, members via a connection, Revit will automatically detect that and automates the process. And wherever those two uh, members are available in the project, it propagates the connection automatically. That part will also explore. And at the end, we uh, will explore the part where sheets can be uh, generated out of the model. But before uh, moving ahead with the webinar, I'll just uh, give you a brief introduction of our company. Uh, most of you who have already uh, joined our earlier webinars are already familiar with our company. We are Capri for Technologies. Uh, we are India's uh, one of the leading AEC uh, solution providers. And AEC stands for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. So for architects, engineers, and construction-related professionals, we provide technology, more specifically, uh, you know, uh, BIM softwares, and uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, here in Delhi since 1987. Now we have expanded worldwide, and our expansion. So our the India offices uh, locate in Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, and Hyderabad, and uh, now uh, we have expanded to uh, to. Uh, to entire world, so uh, we have uh, we are a part of now a bigger company called Winzero Company, and uh, Winzero Company is comprised of uh, Capricot in India, A2K in uh, Australia, Cadline in UK, and uh, US Cad in uh, in USA. So we are a part of uh, you know technology provided now globally. Anyways, so. Uh, a part of a technology is also the learning of the technology. And uh, I myself uh, uh, come from uh, the consulting services department of the company, where we focus on you know uh, BIM implementation and BIM training part of it. And webinar is actually uh, one of the you know uh, parts of it. So. Uh, 
So we'll uh, focus today's webinar around, uh, you know, Revit, using Revit uh, 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 around steel detailing. So most of you, I believe, already heard about Revit, but those who are not familiar about Revit have, have never heard about it. I'll just give you a brief two slides introduction for it. So Revit is basically uh, an authoring tool for delivering BIM software, BIM projects. So it's a BIM software, basically. BIM is basically a design workflow designed to construction. Uh, and a BIM model can further be used for operation maintenance. So BIM stands for building information modeling. I think most of you already know about it. Here the word building is actually used as a noun. Uh, it is not used as a noun, but it is used as a verb basically. So if I find some kind of a synonym uh, for uh, building as a verb, then it becomes uh, uh, creating, for example. So creating a, a, an information model or developing an information model. So the intent of BIM is to develop a model with uh, information, construction related information fed into it. And that's construction related information to be fed by some kind of an authoring tool. And Revit is that authoring tool basically. Uh, so uh, what Revit gives us, it gives us a single coordinated model. It means it gives us a model uh, which uh, is coordinated well, that is multiple discipline people are working at the same time. For example, uh, uh, on, a, on a project, suppose architects team, interior designers team, structure engineers teams, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, firefighting, SMT, all, all, all of these discipline people are working together and they are uh, you know, syncing their progress on a cloud platform and that uh, platform will provide a, a combined uh, combined central model. We also call it central model. So it gives us a single coordinated model where everybody would be uh, you know, taking decisions on the basis of that model. And that is the whole picture of BIM. Because BIM talks about, uh, BIM, BIM, uh, talks about uh, creating a digital prototype and using that digital prototype by, uh, uh, by multiple stakeholders to take decisions during design, then construction, and then operation and maintenance as well, post-construction. So it gives us a single coordinated model. That database, it is provided by the Revit. Then who can work on it? Like I already mentioned, multiple discipline people, maybe architects team, engineers teams, and contractors team at the same time can work on it collaboratively on cloud platform by using the tool Revit. Then uh, how it works, because uh, like I already mentioned, it gives us a single coordinated model. So this single coordinated model will become a, a, a resource for decision making during uh, construction and post construction. So once a model is ready, once designer submit the model, then they, that model will be used to deliver the project on site as well. And uh, whatever changes are made on site can also be then updated to, uh, to uh, a Revit model or BIM model, and that model will become an as-built model. And that as-built model can further be used for operation and maintenance. So uh, then uh, when can you work on it? So basically, like I mentioned, from design stage to construction and post-construction for operation and maintenance, the same BIM model can be used. So that BIM model will be produced by Revit. So Revit will be used from design to construction to operation. All, although in the entire BIM uh, workflow, multiple softwares will be required, but Revit is one of that software, which is uh, an authoring tool, which is authoring the information. And I think, uh, like I, you already uh, understood, I believe that uh, BIM is all about information here, right? So uh, authoring that information, Revit is required. What are the major benefits of Revit? I've just written those down. So first benefit is it gives us a single coordinated model. Uh, so it becomes a single coordinated database for every uh, stakeholder in a, in a project. So be it a project manager or designer or uh, you know a contractor or any uh, person who is working on that project, it, it becomes a single uh, you know a coordinated database. Everybody would be taking decision on the basis of that database. So everybody would be getting you know latest uh, uh, you know data. Uh, at, at, at the same time. Then another benefit is, for example, if you have already created a single coordinated model, then that model uh, 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 is since, uh, you know, comprised of multiple disciplinary uh, uh, so models. So that uh, multiple disciplines when collaborate together, they, uh, they will, uh, uh, th there are clashes bound to happen. So for example, if a uh, mechanical engineer has shared its model for uh, HVAC and structure engineers already shared its, its model on cloud, uh, then, once you know uh, those models are coordinated on on online 
on cloud it is possible on cloud or otherwise you can use offline software that is never works to detect the clashes in that so suppose a duct has has clash clashed with uh, with the uh, with the uh, a beam a structure beam so and obviously that, that that issue needs to be resolved uh, before uh, issuing uh, drawings to the uh, to the site so that is why clash detection and proper condition can be done only uh, only uh, within that model with the, uh, before uh, submitting it for for construction another benefit is that whatever changes you saw like whatever updates needs to be done as per the uh, uh, detected uh, clashes that can be made easily in the in in the in the model so by using revit uh, change management is automated so for example if you are making uh, changes in in 3d connected 2d drawings maybe plan drawing elevation drawing section drawings and quantities will automatically update that is another benefit of it another benefit is that obviously like i mentioned 2d and 3d is are connected so whatever changes you are making in 2d 3d will also update and if whatever changes you will make in 3d model 2d drawings which are connected with it will automatically update uh, all of this is possible because it has an extensive bim library so uh, for for any software to work properly it should have a library for that like in autocad like most of you i think already familiar about autocad in autocad we have blocks library so we may have you know generic blocks or uh, you know dynamic blocks uh, depending on the uh, type of project and type of requirement but the idea is without the library of uh, blocks we cannot properly work in uh, in uh, autocad we need to rework many things similarly uh, for any other 3d software for example some of you might have already used other 3d software such as sketchup or format or uh, 3ds max all of these uh, softwares actually heavily rely on its library so autodesk does also provide you know extensive bim library as per country standard and today like we are focusing on uh, this steel uh, detailing part of uh, of revit so steel uh, detailing uh, uh, will uh, you you'll notice that uh, steel detailing would also have the steel connections preloaded in it and all of those steel connections are parametric that you can modify them as per your requirement and even if you do not find a proper steel uh, connection for your project then you can also design it and can reuse it you can also create it as a block or as a as a library you can add it to the library you can reuse it in multiple projects that is the idea of revit in this case so these are different advantages advantage now let us discuss about the workflow of uh, steel detailing a steel project from design uh, designer's perspective to the fabricator or contractor's perspective so uh, so in this case uh, uh, this is uh, the project which needs to be delivered and uh, from a conceptual design stage to structure design to structure analysis phase to detailing of that structure not we are focusing on steel here so steel detailing and then you know that steel detailing can be uh, sent for fabrication and then can be sent for installing on the site and then later on can be used for operation maintenance all of these stages will comprise of the same bim model and that bim model will be uh, taken out from from revit so today we'll focus uh, so today we'll focus on uh, sorry so today we'll focus on the uh, detailing part of it right so i think conceptual design we have already taken few webinars on conceptual design and revit uh, uh, so today uh, and structure design i'll, I'll discuss uh, through the webinar and detailing part will focus today right and then that detailed model can be sent to the fabricator and they can uh, extract drawings out of it and can be used for installation on site or construction on site and then can later be used for operation maintenance so this is the software portfolio which is uh, basically used in general uh, globally used for steel detailing uh, uh, it's an autodesk portfolio so uh, architects and engineers most of the time when they are starting the model from the conceptual design stage they actually use generic connections they do not use specific connections for example if beam to column needs to be connected they just specify in ga drawing that uh, an additional plate or additional haunch needs to be added that haunch detail or the number of bolts or number of welds Uh, can be added later so on the conceptual design stage to the design development stage generic connections are mostly used in autodesk revit then uh, engineers mostly structure engineers they actually use uh, capabilities of revit uh, of uh, adding you know customized steel connections and they either use uh, pre defined parametric steel connections or otherwise they customize uh, their own steel connection and then the steel connection library uh, will be used uh, 
for uh, uh, for detailing the model in Revit. So Revit will be used for the system connection as well. Then later on, if required, although now Revit has got uh, uh, Revit has enhanced uh, a lot. Now, if you are using you know standard uh, steel uh, uh, steel members uh, out of uh, steel code. Uh, you you you'll get the library also predefined in 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 Revit. So Revit does provide you the uh, the standard steel uh, library as per Indian steel code as well. So if you are using let's say ISJB section or ISLB section or ISMB section or any L section or T section uh, out of steel code, then uh, Revit is quite uh, you know uh, sufficient for detailing those uh, parts. But when it when we talk about PB connections, sometimes Revit has the uh, Revit has some uh, shortcomings in it. So you may use another software that is advanced steel. So mostly contractors and subcontractors and fabricators actually sometimes use advanced steel as well. So earlier, uh, Autodesk advanced steel was the software when you know Revit, uh, like I mentioned, Revit uh, has introduced steel detailing in uh, uh, Revit 2017 version. So before 2017 version, uh, usually uh, uh, you know architects and engineers. Uh, design or model their uh, project in in Revit and then send that uh, model to Advanced Steel. And Advanced Steel uh, will be is, is Advanced Steel was used earlier uh, by contractors or maybe structure engineers to detail uh, the steel uh, connection part of it. But now, since Autodesk Revit has already introduced many steel connections in it in its library, and you can also have the capability of creating custom steel connections as well, then you can easily uh, uh, you know. Uh, detail your steel uh, projects in, in, in Revit. Uh, but still, advanced steel is available and it's a, it's a powerful tool. You can further, if required, uh, you can further uh, you know, send your Revit model to advanced steel. There's a, there's a live link between that. And most of the time in today's uh, you know, uh, 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 world, uh, uh, contractors and subcontractors prefer working in advanced steel. But uh, most of the work, if using, uh, you know, uh, uh, steel code uh, uh, sections, then Revit uh, is sufficient. But if you're using PV sections, uh, customized sections, then sometimes advanced steel is required. Anyways, I'll show you the workflow. So uh, these are Revit uh, steel uh, detailing connections. These, this is the library which is available. As you may notice, connections are divided as per uh, different types, such as beam end-to-end -end connection, column to beam connection, bracing related connection, plates uh, at, at the end of the beams, platform uh, beam connection, tube connection, you have uh, an entire list of it. And similarly, you can you know, simply load those connections here. And uh, uh, to add to your knowledge, these connections are mostly borrowed out of advanced steel. And now Revit is extensively used to detail these steel uh, connections. And uh, for example, if you export this Revit model into, into advanced steel, then those connections will be read in advanced steel as well. So no data loss will be there. So the, this is the, uh, the library which you see in Revit, which uh, contains these steel connections. So then you can further choose one of the connections from the properties palette and can add it to your project. This is one of the screenshots of, of Revit. So uh, like I said, we have got now parametric steel connections, which are built in in Revit as per different country code. So you will get US-based uh, steel connections, you get UK-based steel connections, you get different country-wise uh, steel connections also. And like I mentioned, for India, they are already having steel members as per uh, steel code. I'll show you the, uh, the options. Then uh, you can obviously model more accurately here that uh, you can also, uh, uh, add uh, plates, additional plates, be it gusset plate or uh, stiffeners or any other plates. And you can also add, you know, uh, different bolts or rivets into it. So, uh, uh, or maybe weld uh, details can also be, welding details can also be added in this case. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, uh, as per design standards, you can uh, convey your design intent before, you know, uh, setting it to, uh, setting it for uh, construction. And later on, uh, Approval workflow can also be used within Revit to approve or uh, reject those connections. So for example, if a structure engineer wants to uh, uh, check your model uh, and if uh, they uh, uh, need to approve or reject as per code uh, standard, they have the capability for that. For example, uh, suppose a sketch has been provided to the, to the modeler and they have modeled something and if it is uh, correct, then they can simply approve it or reject it. Or maybe you, you can, uh, like a structure engineer may suggest, suggest modeler to revisit that uh, connection. And that way this workflow will, will work. And you'll get you know, different connections highlighted as per uh, these approval status. 
Similarly, if, for example, uh, a connection is re revisited or rejected, then that connection needs to be designed again. And then you can simply uh, open the properties and you can modify it easily. Like I already mentioned, Revit's, uh, you know, change management is quite automated. You can just simply change that connection, all the related drawings uh, or uh, sections or details will automatically uh, update. So this is that window which allows you to uh, control. So this is one of the examples I've taken as a screenshot, but I'll show you in the in the project as well. So where you can control, you know, rafter uh, length, you can also control bolt and weld, you can also control additional stuffers and plates. Okay, so uh, then later on, once a Revit model is completed, then you can take it to, to advanced steel if required. Although in most of the projects now Revit is quite uh, sufficient, but still many contractors are still using advanced steel. So the export import uh, is through SMLX file, and this uh, uh, will provide a live syncing between uh, uh, Revit and advanced steel. So whatever changes are made in advanced steel can be further synchronized in Revit, and whatever changes are made in Revit can be synchronized in advanced steel. So anyways, so let us move to live project demo. So I'm opening, uh, I've opened Revit already. And uh, the version I'm using is Revit 2022 because I'm more uh, comfortable with it. Although uh, I'll take you through uh, newer versions of Revit also, that is 24, which is launched in uh, uh, recently in March. They have also added few automation options for, for connections from designers point of view. So anyways, I'm starting with new projects. So it is showing me uh, the recent files which are open. And like before webinar, I was actually working on one of these steel projects. Let us start uh, begin from the uh, uh, from the scratch. So if I open a new uh, project, I get to choose one of the templates predefined. So one of the predefined uh, structure steel template, I'm using this one. And we uh, do get different, uh, you know, uh, uh, steel uh, templates as well. So you can choose any other uh, steel uh, uh, sorry, a structure template as well. I'm opening one of the structure templates, default structure template. And in this case, uh, I've got this project browser and properties palette, and we have got this ribbon. In its in, in our ribbon, since it's a multidisciplinary software, it supports multiple disciplines. We have got architecture tab, then we have got a structure tab, and the structure tab connection option is also given. So you can detail uh, detail out your connections from here as well. Otherwise, after Revit 2019 version, Revit has uh, uh, built in another uh, tab for uh, especially detailing the steel part of it. So this is the steel uh, detailing part uh, in, in Revit, where you can either use one of the predefined connections, or otherwise you can create your own plates, your own bolts, welds, and you can also add you know modified sections when wherever required. You can also uh, you know uh, figure out different uh, connections joints when, uh, for example, uh, plates are not uh, uh, required. You can also cut one section through another if required, although it is not recommended mostly by structure engineers. But again, if uh, there, there's a situation when one member needs to pass through another member, then those uh, uh, work, uh, those options are also given and you can also, uh, you know, uh, convey your design intent. Then further, uh, uh, options are related to other disciplines such as precast and systems. Anyways, so let us uh, begin with a uh, structure template. So uh, uh, before starting with uh, with the project, let us uh, check for the uh, for the levels. So if I go for, let's say, uh, one of the elevations here through my project browser, as you may notice, I have got this uh, elevation with two levels. So by default, Revit provides us two levels. Now it depends on the uh, type of project you are doing. You can just simply add more or uh, lesser levels. So I'm going to the datum panel and I'm adding more levels here. So uh, let us begin with, uh, let's say I'm just changing the existing level first. I'm keeping uh, this level at, uh, let's say four meters. Uh, as to start with, uh, let's say the base of the ceiling, I'm just calling it uh, ceiling level maybe. So you can just rename it accordingly. Your uh, you know uh, views will also also rename like this structure plan has has renamed. Then similarly, uh, I can also add more levels. I'm adding another level to uh, uh, to consider it as a roof level. So I'm just taking a very small building and I'm just uh, calling it roof level. And naturally, this will become our let's say ground level or NGL, I'll just call it. Let's say this I'm considering as NGL. And I'm also adding, let's say, uh, another level for uh, 
for plinth uh, purpose. Let's say my plinth is at 600 mm. I'm just adding a plinth level. I'm just calling it plinth. And this will become uh, a plinth level for me. These are overlapping. I can just you know uh, add an elbow here and can place it below. And I'm adding one, uh, let's say, foundation level also. Uh, let's say 1800 would be fine, I believe. Or otherwise, you can also change it as per your requirement. Yes, I'll go for 2400. Maybe 1800 is fine. It depends. Like you can change it later as well because uh, it's a parametric software. And as per uh, uh, you know. Uh, as per structure engineer's input, you can change it any any time. Sorry. Let's connect it here. I'll just call it foundation level. So this is foundation level. So these are few levels which are added. So this is just an example. You can add uh, levels as per your, uh, you know, uh, your requirement, your project requirements. Right. So you can also expand the extent of these levels, although these are up to infinite. If I check it in 3D, these levels are actually uh, acting as a plane for providing, you know, basis for uh, providing base for for any component. So we right. will start, uh, you know, placing components over these levels. Now, if I go for just allow me a minute, please. Just a minute, please. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So I was discussing that uh, we can simply add levels here and ask for our levels. We can go to either floor plan or structure plan. So I'm just going to, let's say, uh, one of the floor plans, that, uh, structure plans, this is, that is NGL, and I'm just adding grids to it. So let's say I'm just taking one sample grid. So this is grid number one. I can just simply copy it to multiple times. So maybe, uh, let's say I'll just take up six meter span. So as you may notice, Revit uh, automatically detects uh, the numbering of the grid. Let's say I'll, I'll just keep five grids. And then I'll create another grid on other side. Or maybe I think I won't require these two grids. OK, let us, let us see. Let us change that. We'll change that later. Let us move forward. So I'm just creating another grid here. And since it is following the same consecutive number, so I'll just rename it here itself. I'll just call it grid A, and I'm just copying it to multiple times. So let's say uh, this side, I'm just taking five meter span, or maybe uh, let's say four meter span. Or maybe I think more span needs to be required. Let's say eight meter span. Let's say only eight meters. Okay. Okay. So only three grids I'm placing for now. Let us begin with this. We can add grids later as well. Once we add grids to an, any one of the levels, other levels will automatically automatically get the grids, as you may notice. So this is so basically grids are also acting as a plane. Uh, if I check it, check that in 3D. So these are also acting as a plane. Anyways, I think I won't require to see these grids in 3D. So that is why I'm switching off its uh, visibility. So this is known as visibility graphics. Double V is the shortcut, or otherwise you can go to view tab. On the left side, you have this visibility graphics dialog box. It is basically, if you are from the AutoCAD background, you can uh, relate this with, uh, with uh, a layer manager in AutoCAD. So it is basically, uh, uh, a kind of layer manager here. It, uh, Revit does provide us predefined layers as per uh, IFC standard. IFC is the standard uh, organization which provides licenses to BIM uh, to become a BIM software. So uh, Revit is one of the IFC certified BIM software, and these are IFC certified layers, and we call them categories in Revit. So these are different categories: 3D model categories, annotation categories. So grid being one of the 2D element, it is considered as an annotation category. Under annotation category group, I'll just simply switch off the layer of the grid for this particular view, 3D. So I've switched off grids visibility in 3D, but for other views, it is visible. 
Anyways, let us begin with, let's say, a foundation level. So for modeling purpose, we can start with foundation level, but most of the time foundation is actually designed uh, at the end of the uh, project. Anyways, to place the foundation, I'm going for a structure tab. I'm uh, simply adding, uh, you know, isolated footing. So I'm considering uh, isolated footing uh, to be placed here. So one of the footings is already given. You can change sizes if required. Let's say I'm just duplicating and creating one of the additional footings. So these are different uh, sizes. I'm just, let's say, going for 600 mm depth this time. And let's click OK. I'll just change it to one of the dimensions. That is depth and it will be updated. So, and then I think I need to update other parameters also. So maybe I'm just renaming it and calling it, let's say three meters by, uh, let's say two meters. So I'm just taking with 2000 and this is all in MM and this is 3000, applying it. And then I can simply place it. Either you can place it manually one by one, or otherwise we have the option once grids are uh, in place, you can just detect grid intersections. I'm just clicking on grid intersections and I'm just selecting all the grids together. And as you may notice, I can also change the orientation of it. I'm considering all the grids uh, similar in this case. Okay, sorry, I just missed the option while explaining. So once uh, satisfied, you can just simply finish the option. And as you may notice in 3D, all these uh, uh, footings are placed. I just turn this view into shaded and as you may notice, these are solid components which are placed here. Let me check another uh, elevation uh, view, and I think it is looking fine here. Yeah, I think I need to extend my uh, levels up to this part. Yeah. If I get in 3D, yeah, now it is looking better. Anyways. The idea is now we can also uh, we can add automated we automated the process of placing foundation now needs to place a column so i'm going for structure tab clicking on the column and as you may notice first we need to obviously start with a concrete column to provide base or capital for steel columns some kind of placing capital uh, or uh, peer for for a steel column i'm taking one of the column sizes which are predefined pre uh, loaded or otherwise you can simply like like i did for other columns duplicate it and can modify it as per your requirement anyways i'm just using one of the predefined one and i'm just placing it uh, uh, reaching up to uh, it is starting from foundation level because i'm working on foundation level and you can uh, control up to what level should it go i'm uh, i'm uh, uh, taking it to the ngl level and uh, no i'm taking it to the plinth level let's say and uh, it is starting from foundation going up to the plinth level. I'll just finish this. And as you may notice, if I get to 3D, uh, you know, uh, these uh, uh, columns are also placed. For example, if you need ma to make changes, let's say if I check it in one of the elevations or sections, you may notice that these columns are kind of, okay. Yes, you know. These columns are kind of, you know, uh, finishing at the plinth level, and plinth level is mostly used for finishing purposes. So what we, what I, I would require is to extend this column a bit. That is also possible, even if there is no level uh, placed for for uh, the top of the column. I can select all the columns at a time. S A is the shortcut. Otherwise, you can go for select all instances. In sorry, I can select all instances of the column in the entire project. And I can simply add uh, a top level offset here. So I can just add an offset of let's say uh, one meter. So a column will uh, start from uh, foundation. It will, I think one meter is too much. I'll just go for 500 mm. So half meter, it is going up above uh, the plinth level. Now we are, I think, ready to place uh, our steel uh, structure. To place a steel structure, obviously we will start with the columns first. I'm clicking on the column command. That is, that is the same, same command. And if I get to its uh, properties, we get one of the uh, uh, I sections which is loaded in this case, and that is UC column. That is universal column. So this column can be used universally. You can just simply select one of the columns, go to its properties, and as you may notice, as per your country standard, like in my case in India, we can simply uh, you know change uh, its properties as per Indian standard code, Indian steel code. As per Indian steel code, I can uh, define nominal weight, moment of inertia, elastic modulus, 
or maybe uh, wrapping constant or maybe the size of it. These are given in centimeters as you notice. But the idea is uh, why not uh, we find it as a predefined, uh, uh, in, a, in a predefined library. And like I already mentioned in the beginning of the webinar that we can simply uh, load one of the predefined library, uh, which is provided by the Revit as per Indian standard. So you can obviously definitely duplicate and can create uh, your own standard uh, section. But uh, in Revit, we do already have library available for uh, for uh, you know steel uh, 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 sections. So how do I get that library? Either you go to uh, so you go to insert tab. So either you can uh, find it online. You have a, a Autodesk library loaded online from cloud. You can extract it from cloud from uh, uh, anywhere. But it would require uh, an internet connection, obviously. But for example, if you also want to keep offline library, then you can also get offline library by clicking on load fam the option, and you can just go for uh, offline library. In my case, as you may notice, I only have only have US library available. So how do I uh, how do I get Indian library? So for getting offline library, I'll just simply uh, show you uh, a Google search. What what do need do you need to search and to get in, to get it uh, online? You just simply uh, search for Revit, uh, whatever version you are using. In this case, I'm using Revit 2022 uh, uh, library, uh, or you may also search for content library. This will uh, take you to the same result. And whatever Autodesk uh, link you are finding, you can just open that. In this case, and this this is true for other versions also. Like you can search for other versions. If, for example, if you are using Revit 23, you get content for 23. If you are uh, using, let's say, now 24 is also long 24, then that content is also available. So this is pre-defined, pre like ready made content by by the Autodesk. So I'm just going for. Uh, in this case, I'm using Revit 2022. So just search for Revit 2022 content library. I'll click on the first link because that is the link I'm getting from Autodesk, and it gives you an entire table of multiple language packages and internationally uh, available different standard content. Like in this case, international English content is here. If you are familiar with other languages and if you are delivering project for, let's say, uh, other countries, such as maybe Germany or some other country, because, you know, uh, Germany is also leading into BIM now, and they are also, you know, outsourcing many projects in India, and they usually prefer German language. So you can also take up, uh, you know, content in Germany as well, similarly in other languages. But if you are preferring English, like myself, then uh, English uh, content is also internationally available for different countries, such as this is from Australia, Australian st BIM, uh, standard this is according to belgium uh, uh, standard this is canadian standard so similarly we can just scroll down and come to indian content uh, for for this particular uh, version of revit so if i go for indian content i can simply click on exe file it will uh, take me to uh, to download it so my antivirus actually shows this warning sometimes but it is okay it's a completely safe link you can just simply download it. So I've just downloaded it in, on desktop for now, and you can simply install it. So within few clicks, you can, sorry, within few clicks, you can just simply download that uh, content. Just a minute. So meanwhile, it is downloading. I'll show you the uh, cloud-based uh, library. It will hardly take few uh, minutes, although I'll just, uh, preparing. yeah. So I'll just install it. So while it is installed, uh, it, it is being installed, I'll just simply uh, go back to Revit and I'll show you the uh, cloud-based library. So if you do not have online content or offline content available, like I'm installing it, uh, you can uh, meanwhile access uh, uh, cloud-based content. Both contents are actually same. So either you can directly access it from cloud or otherwise you can download and install it in your system. So I'm installing it in my system as well. It is almost done although. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just show you uh, the content which is available on cloud. So I'll click on load Autodesk library. This option will be available only after Revit 2021 version. So if you're using earlier version, that is 2020 or 2019 or any other earlier version, you can uh, you need to actually rely on offline library. But if you're using later versions of Revit, that is after 2021, that this time I'm using 2022, you need to, uh, you, you get this option also available, load Autodesk library. I'll click on Autodesk library and it uh, takes me to uh, a dialog box where you can uh, you know search for content either by using search bar or otherwise you can uh, browse it uh, country wise and language wise as well if i click on this globe uh, sign globe thumbnail it takes me uh, to choose uh, a language like in this case i'm only familiar with english so i'll just choose english in this case and then you can also choose the region for example us based content 
why am, am I preferring US based content? Because US uh, based content, uh, because Autodesk has provided like a huge library for US and UK as well. So if you're not finding certain uh, fixture or furniture uh, in, in your Indian content, then you can simply uh, search for US content. So furniture like maybe chairs, tables, if required, or fixtures like uh, uh, bathroom fixtures or kitchen fixtures can be common uh, you know, within multiple countries. And then you can uh, take advantage of uh, other regions as well. Anyways, I'm going for Indian library in this case. I'll search for India. And as you may notice, it uh, does get uh, categories for India as well, such as uh, structure columns, structure framing, and rebar shapes. Today's uh, focus is only on steel. Uh, we are not, you know, going for rebar today. So that is why I'm going for steel columns or framings. Uh, I see many uh, hands are getting raised. So if anybody has any questions, uh, they can uh, uh, put their questions in, in the Q&A box uh, or maybe in the, uh, they can put questions in Q&A box, we'll answer from there within. Or otherwise I'll take a brief Q&A session after uh, uh, finishing uh, my topic. Anyways, moving ahead. So now, as you may notice, uh, you get uh, content for India as well. So I'm just uh, loading uh, steel uh, content. So in this case, uh, columns are given and I'm going for steel column, India specific. And this one is, uh, let's say B column. I'm taking the first example. I'll just load it. And as you may notice, it actually opens up a steel table. So this is that, uh, this is very much familiar to steel table. And as you may notice, it has got all the uh, uh, information as per steel table. A uh, 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 person has asked the question, when will the structure rebar detailing webinar will be held? Uh, I think you should uh, uh, follow uh, us uh, uh, on various platforms and you'll uh, get to know uh, the update. We will definitely uh, 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 put a webinar on structure rebar as well. But today's focus is on steel for now. Anyways, or otherwise you can also join our uh, you know, uh, training course if uh, interested. Uh, then you can uh, also learn, uh, you know, steel, uh, steel and rebar detailing there as well uh, from the industry professionals. Anyways, so uh, anyways, so I was uh, discussing about that we can load library from uh, from Autodesk uh, uh, Cloud, and as you may notice in this case, uh, this library contains just a minute. Uh, Okay, so it contains multiple sections just such as ISJB sections from 150 to uh, 225. We have got, you know, ISLB sections. We have got ISMB uh, sections. We have got, you know, ISWB and multiple sections. And similarly, uh, their properties are actually taken out from the steel code. For example, if I focus on, let's say, ISMB 350 or let's say 450, in this case, uh, its width heights are given in centimeters, flange thickness, web thickness, flange fillet, I'm focusing on any one of it. And uh, similarly, you know, uh, moment of inertia, sectional area, nominal weight, and uh, uh, moment of inertia along the strong axis and weak axis both, and you know elastic models. All of these information are prefed as per uh, steel uh, code uh, in India, and this is how we can you know you leverage uh, one of the uh, uh, library options from from given by Autodesk. So, anyways, I'm taking out let's say I guess. Uh, uh, MB 450, maybe I'll just take up 350 as well, 400 as well, 500, 500. Let's say I'm just loading from 250 to 550. I'm just loading, or maybe not 250 or 300. I'm just going from 350 to 550. Now it depends on your uh, you know project requirements also. I'm loading ISMB section. So you can just select multiple rows, click OK, and all of that will be loaded in your uh, in your uh, uh, you know pro current project. So in my current project, if I go back to uh, to uh, columns. As you may notice, those uh, columns are now loaded in this case. I, ISMB 350, 400, 450, 500, different columns are loaded. Similarly, like my uh, you know, uh, uh, offline library installed, I may also load uh, you know, beams out of it or maybe columns out of it or any library. So if you need to, let's say, uh, if like in my case, now it is installed. So if uh, offline library is already installed and I already showed you the process how to install the library, it's very simple. It's one Google search away. Then you can just simply go to insert tab again and you can go for a load library. This option uh, loads library from offline uh, folder and this one loads from the cloud source. 
anyways so cloud we have already seen i'm just going for load family from the offline source and as you may notice now in this uh, offline source it is actually saved in c drive but my software is in c drive so most of the time it takes up the same directory uh, where software is installed in most of our cases we use in india c drive to install our software that is why c drive under that we have program data folder then autodesk then rbt the version i'm using this time I'm using 2022, that is why RVT 2022, and it does get entire library folder. Under library, you have multiple language packages. If your license is multilingual, in my case, I have multiple languages packages. Otherwise, you'll directly find English folder. Under English folder, you have the choice to go for metric or imperial. So uh, I'm going, I'm preferring metric in this case. And under that, like I already mentioned, I already had the US library, but now I just installed India library. I'm also getting India specific content. If I go back to US content, we also have US uh, related content, right? Anyways, I, uh, for the structural uh, columns and connections, I do not require uh, uh, US content. I would require India content. So I'm going for India uh, content. And suppose this time I'll just, columns you have already seen, like these are the same columns as you may notice. This will also load uh, the uh, steel table. It's, uh, it will also load that table. Anyways, I'm going back. Uh, this time, let's say I'll just load the framing. Out of that. So I'm just taking uh, 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 framing. Framing is basically, uh, uh, it comprises of uh, uh, girders and uh, beams. So I'm just going for a framing. Here I have got steel framing, India specific. And in India specific, I do have, you know, different uh, sections in it. So I'm going by the shape B. So that is, you know, uh, I section. I'll just click OK. And as you may notice, same, similar kind of, uh, you know, table has been launched. And suppose for beams, I'm going for, let's say, ISMB uh, 100 to, uh, to let's say, uh, 350. Uh, and just simply, uh, or maybe larger also, let's say 450. I'm loading these much of beams in here. So now... Yes, many types loaded, loading. Yeah, no issues, I just loaded. So it is showing me that it will make our model heavier. Sometimes I would suggest, uh, give us, uh, you know, some tips along the way as well. Anyways, I'm just loaded, loaded it. And under structure tab, you can go to beam option. And under beams, as you may notice, all of those uh, sections are also loaded in this case. Anyways, let us start placing it in the project. I'm going for column. And this time I'm going for, let's say, ISMB 450 or maybe 500. Let's say I'm going for 500. Again, uh, you need to choose uh, from which level it is starting from. So I'm already working on foundation level. And I would prefer not to work on foundation level for this case, because obviously foundation is already in place. I'm going for another uh, level. And that is, uh, let's say, uh, I think plinth level is fine in this case. Or maybe I can, uh, yeah, plinth level is fine. Uh, so I'm just uh, placing columns. Let me open 3D as well. So side by side view would be, you know, quite uh, good to check the project. Anyways, I'm just placing columns. This time ISMB 500, for example, uh, is starting from plinth level and going up to, let's say, ceiling level is fine, I believe. I've already created roof level and ceiling level. I'm going columns for ceiling up to ceiling level for now. And then I'll just simply select all the grids because I'm preferring the same column for on all the grid and I'll just finish it. There's some issue, I believe. Okay. I think it's still, uh, just a minute, what is the issue here? Okay. Let me try it again. Uh, from another level, I'm going for ceiling level. Sometimes it, uh, it might create issues. I'm taking the same section, uh, placing it on the, it is starting in depth. So I'm go going uh, from ceiling level to, uh, to plinth level this time. Let me, by creating out on grids, changes. the issue, not able to find the issue here. Let me place one column at a time and then we'll see the issue. So one column is placed in this case, a single column is placed and this copies of it.
and I'll make copies of this. Sometimes when one command doesn't work, you can work with other command. The uh, issue was that uh, Revit was detecting columns which are already placed on the grid. That is these concrete columns. That is why it was not allowing me to uh, place steel columns. Anyways, I just select all these steel columns and you have already seen the issue that it has it has been uh, embedded inside it. Obviously, we do not need to embed it in, uh, inside it. We can just simply add an offset because we have already added offset in the, in the concrete column as well, top offset. Similarly, I'll just add bottom offset to all the steel uh, columns that is 500 ml, and it is starting from uh, from the base uh, from the top of the column. So, anyways, this way you can uh, simply add the uh, columns. I can also change orientation whenever required. Like you can select the column, and if it is uh, if orientation needs to be changed, you just simply flip the column by hitting a space bar, as you may notice, right? So, I'll just turn it into shaded, and you know, can get it easily. Anyways, moving ahead. Now columns are placed. Uh, we can simply you know connect it with the beams. So for connecting uh, the beams, I can just simply go for beam option, and uh, you can choose one of the beams. Let me uh, introduce 150 mm for example. I'm going by 150 mm beam, and I can also use the same option on grids. And as you may notice, all of these are actually placed on the grids. So I think this beam is just a secondary beam, and now I'm adding another beam. Let's say on uh, roof level this time. And this time I'm placing a beam starting from this end uh, to, to the mid of it. So I'm just placing another beam. And this time I'm taking a larger section of beam, let's say 350, for example. And it's uh, starting it from this end, placing it to the center. And as you may notice, a beam is placed in this case. Now, what I want with this beam is to is to bend it uh, like is, I, I want to create a, a, a sloped beam, for example. For that, I'll just simply uh, go to one of the elevations or section. I think here left side or maybe in this case, uh, west elevation can work. I'm just opening the west elevation. And what I'll do, I'll just select the beam and you can just simply shift it uh, downwards or upward by uh, uh, you know shifting this pointer. Or maybe you can just add the value here. I'm just adding a value minus 1500 and it is actually shifted down. Okay. Similarly, I can just uh, shift it to others, like mirror it to the side and you can just, as we notice, it is now uh, automatically adjusted uh, as per our requirement. Anyways, I hope you got the basics of it. Similarly, uh, whenever connection is required, you can just simply add a connection. I'm just removing a beam here. Since time is less, I'll just simply you know, uh, show you the connection part of it as well. So uh, in Revit, we have uh, some options under steel tab that so you, you have already seen how to place columns and beams. Once columns and beams are placed, then you need to proceed for the connections. To proceed for the connections, you need to understand the, uh, the level of details which is controlled in Revit. For example, if I, uh, let's say, uh, add a connection first, so I'm just, okay, I'll, I'll uh, first explain the LOD uh, part of it. As you may notice in this case, we have three options. Uh, I think some of you are already Revit users, so you can relate to it much easier. Uh, that is when you uh, go for uh, uh, these uh, options under the option quick uh, view bar, this is known as quick view bar. In this case, you have view related options such as scale, you have options such as uh, detail level. This is the detail level I'm talking about. You have the option for turning into shaded hidden line or wireframe. So anyways, I'm just turning into shaded or realistic for that matter. Here you have this small button. I think you, you, you all have located this. That is a detail level. You can just simply click on it. And this detail level, once turned into course, will not show any steel uh, sections properly. As you may notice, all, all of my steel members are turned into merely lines. You can switch on line widths. I'm going for view tab. I'm switching on line widths here. And once line width is switched on, as you may notice, all of these lines are darkened enough, but uh, these are not showing the member uh, 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 profile. It is only showing single line. It is not showing the profile if it is I section or a T section or C section or any uh, other type of section for that matter. For a steel member, they actually interact uh, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the detail level. If you change it to medium, they will show you the, uh, the sectional detail. Like as you may notice, I'll just switch off line widths for now. And as you may notice, it, this particular column, let me isolate this column, for example. Just, so if this particular column is showing uh, the, uh, the flange and web of the column in this case. But if I, for example, further change its uh, detail level to fine, you will notice, okay, I'm getting the saving reminder. Let me save this project also.
And once I turn it into fine detail, we'll also see that radius, uh, uh, these connecting radiuses for flanges and webs are also given, right? So, uh, which is uh, important for moment of inertia. Anyways, if I turn it into coarse, it turns into a single line. If I turn it into medium, it turns, it will show you the uh, flange and web thicknesses. And it will also, uh, once turned into fine, will also introduce the curvatures which are connecting uh, between that. Similarly, a steel connection can only be seen, like I've not added any connection yet. I'll just unhide everything. I've not added any connection yet, but once we add a connection, it will it will only be visible on, on the detail level fine. If you're keeping your model to coarse or medium for, uh, detail level, it will not be visible. Such as, I'll just show you one project which is already having steel connections in place. <laughs> Let me open this project. It is opening. Let us wait for a while. So in this case, as you may notice, steel connections are already placed. How did I place those connections? I'm discussing that as well. But the idea is uh, these connections are placed already. So, and are highlighted further in orange color. So once I turn uh, my detail level to course, all of these connection details and uh, member details will be gone. Connections will be highlighted in green colors, green color circle, it's a representation. And uh, you know, uh, uh, steel members are converted into merely lines, right? And uh, if I turn it into a medium detail level, uh, steel connections uh, cannot be seen, but uh, the members, steel members can be seen. And those steel connection green representation will be will be seen. Like in this case, the steel connections are placed uh, on three of these ends, but this end is not having the steel connection, right? But once you turn it into, let's say, I just focus only on, let's say this part, once you uh, turn it into fine detail level, that uh, it will load all the steel connection, will show the steel connection in the project as well. Why uh, Revit has given us these kind of detail levels, the, uh, uh, it, uh, it tracks back to the idea of LOD. LOD stands for level of development. So I think uh, most of you uh, have heard about LOD, but I think uh, I think I should discuss about uh, uh, the detail of it. So for example, I'm now discussing about LOD. So LOD stands for uh, level of uh, development, basically, level of development specification. And uh, uh, the standard document for LOD is, uh, which is followed is uh, LOD specifications, uh, uh, 2021 okay. issued by uh, BIM forum. Right. So this is the uh, uh, LOD uh, uh, document, which is being followed. Right. right. This is the LOD standard document. Okay, so uh, it actually divides uh, a, a BIM project into multiple uh, numbers like LOD 100 stands for conceptual design. LOD uh, 200 stands for uh, design development or you can call it schematic design. It is basically schematic design. Like LOD uh, 300 stands for uh, design development stage and design starts to freeze on this uh, after this stage. Uh, there's another stage between LOD 300 and 400 that is LOD 350, which is very common. It's a GFC releasing stage basically. So mostly construction documents are released on this stage. So uh, most of the designers actually work up to LOD 350. Designers, I mean architects or you know structure engineers, if they uh, uh, model a, a project in, in Revit, they provide a BIM model up to LOD 500, uh, 350 most of the time. But 350 is the GFC good for construction drawing stage. I'll just write down the full form also. Good for construction drawing, or you, some of you also call it, uh, you can also call it working drawing stage, right? So it is the release of working drawing. Then LOD 400, now uh, to uh, completely achieve LOD 400, contractor uh, contractors uh, needs to involve on, on, on BIM as well. So they need to also adopt BIM. And they develop, you know, uh, short drawings on it. So it's a short drawing stage, or you can call it, uh, you know, a construction documentation stage. So how construction needs to be carried out, those documents, uh, so be it, uh, let's say uh, 4D simulation or 5D simulation, all of this is done on LOD 400 model, right? I'll just call it construction documentation stage, right? 
Then uh, LOD 500, now construction will be started by using LOD 400 model. Then after uh, post construction, if there are any changes on site, for example, if let's say Philips lights are, are to be planned to be placed on a, in a conference room, and now uh, during the construction, suppose Philips lights were not uh, available for some reason, then suppose instead Wipro lights were, were placed, uh, Wipro lights were uh, placed on, on site, then uh, those changes which are made on site can further be updated on in the model. And if they are updated in the model, then that model will become an as-built model. And this as-built model is known as uh, LOD 500 model. Okay, this is as-built stage or as-built model. And this as-built model will be further used for operation and, and maintenance. Thanks. Or further, there is another level of uh, LOD also, which is not practiced much in India, that is LOD 600, uh, which is uh, basically uh, you asset all the ta you tags, uh, all the assets, asset tagging is done on this day. And this model is ideally should be used for operation maintenance. So I'll just mention operation maintenance here. So I believe uh, now you got the idea of LOD. Now relating this LOD idea with the with the steel structure. So basically, if for example a designer, maybe a structure engineer or an architect, if suggesting some uh, 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 column or beam, then they may suggest the position of column and beam just by using a line tool. So they may issue a drawing which is showing a line uh, only. The position that line will be the representation of the of the uh, placement of columns and beams. The columns and beams can be represented at LOD 400 as as lines that can be controlled uh, within Revit. Let let me go back to Revit. So uh, that can be controlled within Revit by using. I can just focus here. Let me place my text a bit side. So. Those who want to take screenshot at any point, they can take it. Anyways, so the idea is now in this case, if I turn it into quotes, that becomes LOD 100 model. So now it is suggesting that these two members are joining by a certain uh, connection. And then once LOD 100 is over, then you can also uh, go for LOD 200 and 300, where you know you can figure out the uh, size of the column, you can figure out the shape of the columns and beams, and similarly, column beam shapes and sizes can be can be shown. That is, you know, medium detail level. And later on, once uh, LOD 350 or 400 is achieved, where short drawing and GFCs are issued, there you can just simply change your model to uh, show the fine details. And it will show all the connection related details, all the bolt related details. So here also you can divide your model into two types of connections, generic connections and specific connections. The generic connections can be done on LOD 350, which is all, which will all, all will be visible only on fine detail, and you know specific connections on LOD 400. That depends on the type of project and type of uh, you know uh, organization as well. Anyways, I'm cleaning off my screen. Now moving ahead. So uh, I think you got the concept of LOD and that is why I was suggesting that while working on, on connections, it is recommended to keep your uh, model uh, view on, on, on fine detail. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the connections. Anyways, now if you need to, let's say, place a connection here, what you can do, you can just simply go to the structure tab or a steel tab, both will uh, have the option for connections here. Like structure tab contains connection option here uh, and steel tab contains first option as connection. If you click on connections, you notice that there is uh, this generic connection which is loaded in my library. I have, I have no, like in this project, no other connections are loaded. So what we can do, we can access the library for connection. How to access that library? You have this small uh, button, this small uh, arrow. You can just simply click on this arrow and this will uh, load the connections, uh, connections library. And like I already uh, uh, showed you uh, in my presentation, like this part, that these are the connections which are, which are available in my uh, uh, library. Similarly, as you may notice, these connections are divided by different uh, you know types, such as beam end-to-end -end connection. These are beam end-to-end -end connections. Uh, column to beam connection. In this particular case, I would like to uh, connect column to beam. So that is why I'm choosing one of the connections from this list. Or otherwise, you can simply load all the connections. So you have different you know connection types. Or otherwise, you can just simply connect. Uh, load all the connections. So I'm going for uh, column beam types first. And let's say I'll just uh, take uh, beam to column C T connection. I'm yeah. also taking, let's say, knee haunch. I'm taking knee haunch with bolted frame. So these are different options which you can explore, right? I'm also taking this one. So these are different options, as you may notice. 
you can just simply use one of these connections. So I've just loaded a few of them. You can also, you know, select all of them and can load it. Or uh, if not required, for example, if you want to keep your model lighter before uh, purging it out, you can just simply remove the uh, connections if not required, right? Anyways, I'm just uh, using the connections here. These connections I've loaded. I'm just clicking OK. After getting these connections in your project, you can just simply uh, go to connections option now. Earlier, I went for this small arrow, connection settings. The connection settings actually loads up this dialog box. These are the loaded connections in your project, and these are the available connections in the library. Anyways, so I'm just clicking on the connections option. I'll just select column and beam together and press enter. Once enter is pressed, as you may notice, a symbol of connection is placed, and it shows the primary and secondary component. In this case, it, uh, Revit is smart enough to detect or automatically primary component as this column. This dark circle represents the primary component, and this uh, smaller uh, circle uh, uh, represents the secondary component. In this case, this is number two component, this is number one component. For some reason, if you want to switch, you can just click on it. it this becomes the primary component, and this becomes the secondary component. In most of these uh, situations, columns are actually primary component. That is, I'm clicking back to the primary component. Once components uh, are uh, in place, you can just simply search for the type of connection you are going to place. Right? So earlier it was a generic connection. Similarly, I can just simply place one of the connections here. So I'm just taking, so it, uh, if you hold your cursor here, it shows the preview of that connection as well, as you may notice. So if your beam was continued, so you may have used this connection. So these are different connections as you may notice. Right? So, so I'm just placing my cursor here to show you the type of connections it's showing. Anyways, I'm using one of this connection, uh, knee punch joint, and it will automatically direct the place, it will make the changes, and connection will be executed, as you may notice in this case. Sometimes it takes a while, like in this case, and it has automatically shortens the uh, uh, beam, it has automatically you know, shortened the column, made a slope here, added few welds. So if I turn it into wireframe, these starry uh, symbols are for welding symbols. And if I show you the uh, bolts, it has also placed the bolts. Now, for example, if you need to change, uh, make changes in the plate or bolts or welds, or maybe if you need to add more uh, stiffeners, let's say additional stiffener needs to be placed here. If you need to add uh, any uh, additional shin plate or any type of plate, you can just simply select the component and you can just simply modify that. Let me place connection again, then I'll just go for the modification. So to place the connection, you need to first connect, uh, select the member, uh, or otherwise you can go for connection option first. Uh, under connection option, you can also uh, choose one of the connections. If connection is not available, you can just simply search for the library. You can go to connection settings. Like this time I'm going for base plates. So I'm going for plates at beams. In this case, I'm going for base plate. I'll just load this one as well. This tube plate I'll also load, let's say, and end plate I'll also load. And then, uh, as you may notice, these uh, components are loaded. I'll just simply go for connections option. I'll select the member and I'll choose the connection, let's say base plate. So this will automatically be updated. I'll just press enter. So I'll wait for it to happen. And as you may notice, a base, base plate is placed. Now, as you may notice, base plate is actually quite short, uh, quite small as compared to the uh, connection here. And similarly, this haunch does have smaller bolts. So whatever connection you need to modify, you can just simply select that connection, go to its properties, and can simply edit that connection. So I can go for modify parameters, and uh, it will uh, change the interface. And as you may notice, this interface contains all the information. So this is the thickness of the plate. It is taking 30 mm by default. I can go for 36 mm or 35 mm, whatever. And then uh, you can simply uh, change its sizes. Like this is 250 mm from all the sides. I'm just keeping, uh, let's say, uh, you can check its drawing in the, in the, in the representation here. So I'm just uh, changing its size uh, from, uh, like I need to change it uh, 250 projection on side three. So I'll just change it to, let's say, uh, uh, 450 projection. Let me check. No, it, it, this is the wrong side. I'm just keeping it 200 mm, 200 mm on this side. And let's say uh, 500 mm and 500 mm on this side. The, this is actually central. Uh, it is taking dimensions from the center. So anyways, I think 200, 250 was fine. I think. Yeah. Then I can just simply, I think 500 is too much. So again, this 
will be decided mostly by the structure engineer. I'm not the structure engineer. I'm, I'm, I'm an architect. I'm not from this field, but I've worked closely with many structure engineers. And I also, uh, you know, uh, work uh, on many projects uh, uh, in context of modeling. And I'm also, uh, and I'm also uh, delivering, you know, BIM trainings here. So that is why I've explored these areas. I, I know Revit well. So that is why I'm exploring it. But again, whatever decision needs to be taken, it requires your domain knowledge, right? Similarly, plate corners can be changed in this case, like fillet uh, plate corner or cut, or maybe you know a convex type. So you have different options, and you can simply introduce that. Anyways, I'm just let's say taking uh, convex corners. Suppose so I'm just taking convex corners on all sides, and as you may notice, plate corners are changed. Right. Similarly, I can go for anchor and bolts. In this case, this type of uh, anchor is used. Basically, these are kind of anchors. I can go for Hilti type anchors, which are also used in India, and any other type of anchors also. Right. So accordingly, you can just simply choose. Let's say I'm going for J, J anchor. So this, these are J bolts or J anchors, as you may know. This, right? so let us store other also. This is the rounded edge. Then you can also change this dia and thicknesses. For, for example, I'll change it to one by uh, four, four, fourth of an inch. Or maybe I can go for hooked. Okay. These are different options which you can explore, right? So you got the idea. These are threaded anchors where you can add bolts. If you are adding bolts, you have the option to uh, put washers uh, on both sides or single side accordingly. You can also choose one of the grades here. These are different options which are given. These are the anchor lengths which are available. Right? Obviously, this much is not required here. I'm just keeping it 600. Similarly, washer plates, if you need to add additional washer plates, it does have a washer plate, but if you want to add additional washer plate, it will be added in this case, as you can notice. Right? So similarly, you can also uh, change thickness of the washer plate and size of it, let's say uh, 75 mm. Right? Similarly, if I go for ankle, uh, uh, you can also uh, control number of uh, bolts and uh, their distances. If I go for 300 mm, as you notice, it is changing. I can just change it to uh, keep it three uh, uh, members, but obviously on this side, it is not required. I'm just keeping two there. But you got the idea, right? So this way you can just simply change number of uh, bolts and anchors if required. Like you can go for three bolts, uh, let's say 200 mm each. So as you may notice, it is changing as per your requirement. Right. Similarly, you can also introduce weld and the type of weld you want. Like in this case, we have flange uh, weld, you have fillet weld, you have profile based weld, different options. Similarly, additional stiffeners and all can be added. Uh, 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 like if you need to add, let's say, leveling plate in it, because sometimes, you know, concrete is not even, then you can also create a, an additional leveling plate, which is added in this case. You can also add number of like more than one leveling plate. You can also add shim plates. This is also uh, uh, given for, you know, providing additional uh, strength. Then uh, shear anchors can also be added. Then shear anchor dimension can be controlled. Web stiffeners can be added. Let me add one of these stiffeners. Let's say I'll just add a stiffener on both sides, not, not on this side. Let's say uh, not web stiffeners. I'm using flange stiffeners. Let's say so I'm adding stiffeners on both sides. Uh, and this time, uh, anyways, you can control uh, different options here. I'm not going into detail because now you know. Let let us add middle stiffener because time is also less uh, now. Uh, it is about uh, one and a half hour for the for the webinar. So those who are interested into uh, in getting into detail, I think I've already discussed enough that you can get into detail uh, here and can explore it further. And if you require any help, you can obviously uh, connect with us. We also run a training program and that uh, training program also helps you to uh, deliver BIM projects. It's a project-based trainer. Anyway, anyways, I'll just select one of the connections and if I need to propagate it, so I'm just, just showing you the automation options now, you can simply right click and propagate connection option uh, can be used to uh, simply add connections at the same similar situations, right? So as you may notice, it is, uh, it is now added to uh, say, so it has automatically detected the same column and similar uh, plate has been placed. Individually, if you need to add, uh, duplicate some plate, you can just simply uh, go to its properties, duplicate it and can individually change one of the options, right? So I hope you got the idea here. Similarly, I've already created a model for that. It, this model contains all the connections. I've also added webs here. 
like I have also added bracing here. So bracing can also be added like a beam and you can simply change its height and connections can be added in that case. So uh, I hope you got the basics of it. So uh, just a minute, let me check if any important thing is left. Yeah, one, one, one of the options which is important here is, for example, if you are checking uh, a model uh, created by some other person, and if you are uh, a reviewer, for example, then you can simply uh, introduce these options. Uh, uh, if it is okay, then you can also introduce okay checked or otherwise checking failed, or maybe you can just go for not calculated. Analysis, if needs to be done, can be done in robot structure analysis software, or you can simply use a STARD Pro. This model can be exported to STARD in, in that uh, case, right? So I hope uh, this has uh, helped. Uh, this will help many people. I think uh, it's already uh, 15 uh, minutes. Uh, uh, we have already overshot it 15 minutes. Uh, let me take a few questions now, if anybody has any questions. and. Uh, So, and then, uh, so I've got one question in chat box, uh, how to import CAD file and start editing it, please. Okay. So uh, to import CAD file, it's not related to the steel topic, but yes, obviously if you already have connections in, uh, already created in, uh, uh, or maybe layout already created in AutoCAD, you can just simply go to insert tab. Uh, but before going to insert tab, you need to choose a plan. So if you go to, uh, 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 go for a plan view. So obviously in this plan view, you can just simply go for insert tab. You can go for link CAD or import CAD. Now it depends on what function of CAD you are uh, using it. So if you are using, uh, uh, you know, uh, AutoCAD uh, for uh, showing details within Revit software itself, like for example, if some detail is created in AutoCAD and you cannot replicate that detail for some reason due to time constraint or due to any other reason in uh, Revit, then you can simply import CAD file here. Otherwise, I won't recommend importing CAD file directly into Revit because it adds up the CAD data into Revit. For example, if you have, uh, let's say, 25 MB CAD file, then it will add the 25 MBs to your uh, to your Revit project as well. That makes your project heavier. So it is recommended if you are using CAD file for referential purpose only, like for placing column layout and for placing beams or for uh, taking uh, reference for connections, then you can simply go for link CAD option. Once you click on link CAD, you choose a CAD file. Uh, on my desktop, I have few CAD files. Let me take any one of this. If you take one of the CAD files, uh, let, let me go with this one. So you choose one of the CAD file, then you uh, can uh, simply uh, choose to preserve the colors of CAD or maybe convert into black and white. Why this option is given? Uh, because uh, you, you tend to work in darker environment in uh, AutoCAD and in Revit, we usually work in, uh, in lighter, like white background. So sometimes colors like uh, cyan, uh, yellow or uh, you know magenta these are not visible properly on white background so you can simply invert the colors or can convert into black and white anyways i'm keeping it preserved and then you can also choose a visible layer then you can specify the layers i'm just keeping all the layers in you can choose the units in this case so i'm just going by the auto detect so it will automatically detect the units from a, a cad file if cad file is a bit less then obviously this needs to be uh, chosen i'm keeping it auto detect and i'm just placing it from origin to origin and then you can just simply click OK. Uh, on what level I'm placing it? Level one, okay. I'm just clicking OK. And that card file is placed here. It's, it's a detailed actually. It's a kind of detail and you can just check that detail and can modify it. So this is the linking part of it. Importing will also contains all the similar options, but it will add the CAD file to your Revit. If CAD is making any changes, Revit will not update. Link CAD will allow you to make changes in uh, AutoCAD and that will update in Revit. I believe uh, this much explanation is fine for now. So another uh, question I'm uh, getting is, most of the questions I'm getting, uh, uh, is related to getting the recording. Most of the time uh, our, uh, you know, uh, our uh, marketing team actually uploads these webinars timely on uh, our YouTube channel. So Capricot does have its YouTube channel. You can follow us there as well. So you can either follow us there or otherwise you can follow us through LinkedIn. So uh, I think we'll get the recordings uh, uploaded there at some time. In Revit 2021, how do we load families? This is the same process. In Revit 2021, you install the family to load family from here, like this option, insert tab. Uh, this load family option is not available in Revit 2021. Uh, like it doesn't connect with a uh, cloud family system. 
and here's another question what is the uh, uh, so I'm, uh, answering another question what is the difference between tecla and revit so uh, there are many differences in tecla and revit and i think i'm not the correct person to answer that uh, you can either you know uh, search it online or otherwise maybe we can uh, uh, some uh, answer you uh, through your email id because i do have your email id once you registered uh, for the webinar so Although Tecla can be used for, uh, I think, structure steel detailing only, Revit can be used for multiple disciplines. Like you can, uh, uh, you know, produce architecture details, structure details, MEP details, all of that can be done in the same software. Tecla is only specifically for structure detail, structure detailing. That is the main difference which I know. Uh, then another question, how can we get the offline libraries from for the connections? So these are actually saved offline uh, at some places. Uh, for the matter of fact, you can also create your own library, uh, own connection offline as well. Like in this case, one of my colleague in my office has actually created this connection. This is one of the connections uh, placed in uh, one of the lift wells. Uh, it is opening. So it is. It was created in 2019. So he has actually created a, a library for it. It's a connection library. So he can now place it anywhere, wherever required. So sometimes, you know, you can create a loadable family for it. Like it's a family environment. I think uh, most of you are already maybe familiar about it. So uh, you can create your connection libraries, can save it and can place it uh, later on in the project. Or otherwise you can just, uh, you know, rely on the predefined connections as well. So this is one of the customized connections. Okay, another question. Uh, another question we got is, uh, Please clear how to uh, create channel box flange to uh, flange column or uh, framing. How to create channel box. So flange uh, based column, obviously channel box uh, flange or uh, uh, like framing can, can be, so these are predefined framings which I'm using uh, given by Autodesk. Otherwise, like we create any family in Revit, you can just simply create any family in Revit. So like this is not the, you know, component creation session. Uh, although Revit has this capability that you can simply using, uh, you know, tools uh, such as extrusion, blend, you can just simply, you know, uh, create your own uh, library in Revit. So this is a parametric library. This is the shape which is taken. And these are the parameters which are added. Although we we sometimes uh, we tend to uh, you know uh, you, you follow us we we have uh, sessions on uh, you know family creation as well there you'll uh, you may raise this question again and we can help you to uh, create you know flange uh, channel box flanges as well. Anyways, uh, another question: How to get schedule lib schedule? Schedule of material, how to make joints. We already uh, covered a webinar on, uh, you know, quantities. So you may again follow us and we can also, so Revit has this capability that we can get a material based schedule as well. But uh, we, this webinar was focused on, uh, you know, steel uh, detailing. Uh, so those who are curious to, uh, uh, for your curiosity, I'll just show you the way. You go to view tab, you have the schedules option, you explore this part of it. You can get material based quantities and number based quantities as well. Anyways, so otherwise you can follow, keep following us. We actually also uh, uh, do webinar on uh, quantities from Revit as well. Another, uh, so there are so many questions. I think I cannot answer all of them uh, now. Uh, so one, one person asking our YouTube channel's name, like Capricot's channel's name. It's uh, Win Zero Capricot, I believe. Let me search for it. If you search for Cape Record, you'll get the YouTube channel for us, for, for our YouTube. And we, we tend to, it, this is the name of the YouTube channel, Win Zero Cape Record Technologies. Uh, you can just find all the webinars uploaded here, most of, mostly. You can find, you know, weekly tips as well. Okay, so uh, trusses can also be created in the same way. Uh, anyways, I think uh, some of the questions I'll, the left, uh, the questions which are left, I'll answer that on uh, uh, through email. I think we can close the Q&A session as well because it's already about 4.30. So uh, we have another meeting in, in place. So if you please allow me, uh, let us uh, close this session. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, okay, bye everyone. Thank you so much. Stopping the session now.